Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan from Genius Coaching, and today we'll be learning about Albert Bandura's learning theory. Albert Bandura believed that we learn through observing other people. When we observe someone, they become a model that we imitate. This may seem pretty obvious. Everyone knows that we can learn through observing other people. However, during Bandura's time, behaviorism was very popular, and behaviorism stated that we learn through the environment rewarding or punishing certain actions. So, if I do something and I'm rewarded for it by my environment, then I'm going to continue doing that behavior. And in the eyes of behaviorism, all of our tendencies and these behaviors that we're going through, this is all just a matter of conditioning. But of course, Bandura felt that that's short-sighted. Because how can we think about behaviors while ignoring our thoughts and beliefs? In fact, Bandura felt that the majority of human behavior actually comes from observational learning. So what was important about Bandura is that he actually proved this was the case using an experiment. And this was called the Bobo doll experiment. So in this experiment, children were allowed to observe adults who were very frustrated and they were hitting this Bobo doll, punching it, kicking it. And then what they did was they gave these children toys and then they took away those toys. This frustrated the children, and interestingly, just like the adults, the children started punching and kicking the Bobo dolls. This showed that observational learning was indeed taking place, and also that there was a cognitive aspect to learning. Because these children, they were observing adults who were in a certain situation, and then when the kids got in the same situation, they reasoned it out and they said, okay, I observed adults, taking out their frustration on the Bobo doll when they were angry. So I should do the same thing because I'm in this similar situation, also feeling frustrated. So whereas behaviorism would say we have to be directly rewarded for something, Bandura was showing that no, this isn't the case. Actually, we can learn vicariously through watching someone else be rewarded. So for example, with our role models, we see someone who is famous or rich or, or succeeded in some way that we value. And then we make that person into a model. And we imitate their behaviors in order to gain the same rewards that they got. And this is, of course, happening all the time. We all have role models. And even if you think about our culture, all the things that we do, all the little behaviors, how we interact with people, it's not like we went through all these different behaviors and experimented until we found the right one. No, we're constantly observing everyone around us and we see what's appropriate. What is society encouraging and what is it discouraging? And we don't have to be directly rewarded or punished for any of this. We can just learn whenever we want through observation. And Bandura spoke about three kinds of models. There was one where you observe someone who is engaging in a behavior and then you imitate that behavior. Another one is if you're given instructions by someone. So these instructions would become your model and you would follow these instructions. And a third kind is where you'd read a book or see a movie or hear a story about someone and you would imitate the behaviors of that person. So Bandura spoke about various ways that the cognitive aspect of things guides our behaviors. He was very famous for his beliefs about self-efficacy. This has to do with how confident you are in the ability to accomplish some action, basically confidence in your skills. So let's say, for example, the environment will reward you for a certain behavior, but you don't believe in yourself, you doubt yourself. So even if you try to do the behavior and you do get a reward, you're not necessarily going to continue that behavior because maybe you didn't like your performance or you never even tried to get that reward because of your own self-doubt. In the same way, you could have a role model, but you could feel that that role model is just a superhero or they have more skills than you have. So you don't feel that you can follow them. You, don't, you decide not to imitate because you don't have that feeling of self-efficacy. And also we all have unique personalities. Some of us find some things fulfilling while others don't. And even if the environment rewards us for doing something, we may not continue because we just don't find it fulfilling or it doesn't match our philosophy. Maybe people around us are being rewarded for a certain behavior and we feel that behavior is wrong. And even if we were rewarded for doing it once, we wouldn't do it again because it's not our style or morally we disagree with it. 
So there are so many reasons why we would engage in a behavior or not engage in the behavior. You see, behaviors thought they were being very scientific by ignoring the cognitive aspect of behaviors because they felt they couldn't observe the, the cognitive things going on, the thoughts and ideas, but they could observe the conditioning process. They could observe someone being rewarded and then continue in that action. So Bandura was able to successfully show the short-sightedness of that approach and also explain various ways that we do in fact learn through observation and through self-belief or just personal feelings and ideas. He also spoke about the importance of attention and memory and motivation. So you have to be paying close attention and if you're not paying close attention or you're not interested enough, then you're less likely to remember it. And of course, if you don't remember something very well, you're less likely to learn from it. And also the motivational aspect of things. As I said before, we all have our own ways of being motivated. We all have our own goals and things that we enjoy. And these aspects of behavior simply cannot be ignored. So that's Bandura's theory. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your day.